these streets is famous for the many, many factories of the kimono fabric makers here in Kyoto. I can hear weaving sound. <laughs> Kyoto is a miracle. Surrounded on three sides by mountains, it's a city that has faced trial after trial, only to rebuild and to thrive once more. It's been called the Thousand Year Capital and for centuries was home to the Emperor of Japan. Kyoto was ripped apart by war, yet carried on. It's a place that is both ancient and modern, adapting yet standing steadfast against historical erosion. Craft making has always been a major industry here. And now, once again, Kyoto faces another test. Those craft makers are under pressure to adapt to contemporary techniques and designs in order to stay competitive. Kyoto, tradition and modernization side by side. That is why these entrepreneurs and their businesses are here and nowhere else. Kyoto has been the home of kimono manufacturing since the emperor's soldiers walk the city streets. And Ayumi of Singing Crane is inspired by the kimonos her grandmother used to make. She uses discarded obis, which are the sash belts of the kimono, and makes something entirely new. Ah! Thank you. Ah, thank you. When we moved to Kyoto, I was looking for a beautiful guitar strap for a new guitar, but we couldn't find any we want. We decided to make beautiful guitar straps with beautiful fabrics, Japanese fabrics. Mm. One day we went to market that temple. They had kimono fabrics and really beautiful obis. We thought, ah, this is really good, really shiny silk fabric and really strong. We brought one to my friend to put together and it came out really beautiful strap. And I wanted to make more. That was the start of singing crane straps. I think silk is beautiful. You can see the color changing by light. People wear kimono for special occasions, so they can't wear the even one stain. So they bring it to recycle shop to sell those obis. Still beautiful. I even like the little stain on the strap. That's the OB's life too, like a story there. <laughs> and then make a new story for another life. We are in the recycle shop in the north side of in the Kyoto city. They've got the kimono section, and sometimes they've got really beautiful OB. I come often every week and find the right one. <laughs> this one would be nice to have here front. This is not woven, but really nice print. In the recycle shops, there's so many beautiful kimonos and obis. I think about my grandmother. She taught me a lot about the old style of the kimono. When I was a child, she made kimono for me and my sister. I always wanted to wear a kimono. I never think to make before, connecting to kimono and all these. I think about her more. I try to decide where to cut these straps and try not to be 
looks like not not same looking. Usually, kimono obi similar color or same group of the color. But I think amad is really beautiful, and I feel funky that way. <laughs> I like to use Kyoto's colors, like a black, brown, gray, Kyoto style into guitar straps. But I wanted to put together with bright color, at least one side. I wanna bring the colors into making straps. At the moment, I sell my guitar straps to Los Angeles and Sydney, Australia, and Germany. I'm wondering what kind of home they're gonna have and what music the owner is playing. And sometimes they send me photos with their guitars and I'm so happy to see it. Throughout history, merchants practiced the art of furoshiki to keep items safe and clean during transport. With elegant simplicity, they would wrap items in this traditional cloth to decorate them when presented as a gift. Itsuko of Masubi Furoshiki is finding new ways to keep this tradition alive. で、まあ、風呂敷風呂敷に対変多く描かれてます。風呂敷というえ、に横に、横に引っ張ろう。できたね。すごい、すごい、すごい。どうぞ。先人の知恵ですとか、先人から育まれてきた素晴らしいそういった文化や美意識というものを風呂敷を通して伝えたいと<笑> <どうぞ。笑> <笑> You don't have to be born in Kyoto to be moved by its rich traditions. 
Thomas Bertrand, originally from France, was inspired by the traditional use of bento boxes and thought he could share this with the world. When you cook a bento, you don't see through the lid. And so it's when you open it, you get a surprise to, to see what's inside. It looks cool, it looks nice. I started Bento Co. in 2008. I was doing some freelance job in Kyoto, and I wanted to sell something online. And just it popped up in my head and said, oh, Bento box, I'm sure it can sell very well. Here's another one. These are really nice. I really like to eat, I really like to cook. For me, it's important to sell something I like, something I'm into, and so the Bento was perfect for that. Bento boxes are really common in Japan, uh, most of the kids we have their lunch packed in a bento and bring it at school. And it has been like that since hundreds of years. Because you have this history of like hundreds of years of the emperor being in, in Kyoto, you needed like all these craftsmen to make nice things for him. You have many, many craftsmen doing all the kimono, lacquerware and, and so on, and also, also the food actually. Many makers in Kyoto don't know how to export their products, so they probably need more like entrepreneurs. It's what we do with Bento Co, because we sell something very traditional, and we tell a story about it. And we sell online, and we export these products everywhere. Sasami. Yotsugurai. Teramashi Street is a shopping arcade it's really famous in Kyoto. Every tourist coming to Kyoto, they're gonna pass by this street. And we are just 50 meters from this shopping arcade. The location is good for us. People who come to our shop, a lot of Japanese, of course, and also many foreigners, are quite surprised about the shop. It's not really common to have like a, a bento boxes only shop in Japan. Being a French guy in Japan and selling like something traditional, I think it's a bit fun to, to, to tell. But like being here is like really important for us. And we have this responsibility to tell the story about Kyoto traditions, Kyoto culture. Lasagna, tacos, rice. Bento & Co, I think we're a pretty modern business and it just seems to still fit in well with the environment with it, that we're in. So we're selling something that's like hundreds of years old, technically, but it's still very modern at the same time. Being outside, celebrating nature, being with some people I like and having good food. <laughs> it's easy to relax and take a break when you're in Kyoto. Inspired by the culture and landscape around them, Kyoto's people are deeply connected to their traditions. Crafts and arts are cherished for their beauty and their history, and these people are finding ways to adapt them to the changing world. For me, like Kyoto, it's a young city, and also a traditional city. So there's this mix of old traditions and new, modern Japan. It feels good to be here. Kyoto is a because I'm in Kyoto, I can find so many different types of kimono over here. I don't think I can do singing crane in other places. 